Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to um, Morning Prayer with the St. Luke in the City team. Um, I'm uh, Reverend Louis Johnson. I'm curate with St. Luke in the City, for those of you who don't know me. Um, I've put today's readings um, in the comments. Um, the, today's readings are Psalm 98 and um, Mark chapter 2, verses 18 to 22. Um, we'll be using our autumn liturgy uh, for morning prayer, our St. Luke in the City autumn liturgy for morning prayer. And I've also put a link to that in the comments as well. So um, please, uh, please do um, uh, use that liturgy. Uh, or if you have a copy of that liturgy, do join in with that liturgy. Uh, but um, you don't have to. Please do feel free to just listen along, pray along with us and also join in the uh, reflective discussion um, after our readings. So we'll begin with a moment of quiet before we start. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And so we come to um, the moment in our liturgy when we like to light a candle uh, to mark uh, this time uh, that, that we spend together and this space that we share together as a sacred time and space. So please, if you have a candle um, and you would like to, do light it with me. So let us pray. We light this candle as a symbol of our faith and hope, for our future as a parish, a people, a world. We trust in the alchemy of the Holy Spirit to bring her dream to life here amongst us. Gather your people, O God, that your dream for us may come true. Amen. So we will pray our collect and um, today is the day in uh, the Church of England uh, calendar when we remember um, Edward the Confessor who was of course uh, King of England until um, 1066 and um, so we'll use the um, uh, special collect for the lesser festival of Edward the Confessor so let us pray sovereign God you set your servant Edward upon the throne of an earthly kingdom and inspired him with zeal for the kingdom of heaven grant that we may so confess the faith of Christ by word and deed, that we may, with all your saints, inherit your eternal glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so, um, we come to our first reading from Scripture, and uh, today we're going to read Psalm 98. Um, and I've chosen this psalm because um, 
I think it, it speaks into um, aspects of our reading from uh, Mark that will follow. So Psalm 98. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvellous things. His own right hand and his holy arm have won for him the victory. The Lord has made known his salvation. His deliverance has he openly shown in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his mercy and faithfulness towards the house of Israel. And all the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Sound praises to the Lord, all the earth. Break into singing and make music. Make music to the Lord with the lyre. With the lyre and the voice of melody. With trumpets and the sound of the horn. Sound praises before the Lord, the King. Let the sea thunder and all that fills it. The world and all that dwell upon it. Let the rivers clap their hands. And let the hills ring out together before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. In righteousness shall he judge the world. And the peoples with equity. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Okay, um, so now we'll have our reading, um, the next reading in our, in our series that we're undertaking at the moment, reading through the Gospel according to Mark. Um, and today's uh, passage is from chapter 2 of Mark's Gospel. Um, verse 18 to verse 22. Now John the Baptist's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting and people came and said to Jesus, why do John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees fast but your disciples do not fast? Jesus said to them, the wedding guests cannot fast while the bridegroom is with them, can they? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast on that day. No one sews a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old cloak, otherwise the patch pulls away from it, the new from the old, and a worse tear is made. And no one puts new wine into old wine skins, otherwise the wine will burst the skins, and the wine is lost, and so are the skins. But one puts new wine into fresh wine skins. Okay, so um, a short reading, but full, <laughs> of course, um, full to bursting indeed. Uh, and so in a moment we will, um, following our usual pattern, read that again. Um, and in the meantime, please do uh, use the comments box to um, share your thoughts. Um, if this is a familiar piece of scripture to you, uh, perhaps share things that inspire you about it or things indeed that trouble you about it um, and if it's familiar and something new has jumped out at you or, or struck you for the first time perhaps please do share that uh, and if this scripture is not familiar to you please share what strikes you about it um, and um, yes following our second reading we will have a think about that and a brief reflective discussion so our reading again Mark chapter 2 verses 18 to 22. Now John the Baptist's disciples and the Pharisees 
were fasting. And people came and said to Jesus, Why do John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus said to them, The wedding guests cannot fast while the bridegroom is with them, can they? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast on that day. No one sews a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old cloak, otherwise the patch pulls away from it, the new from the old, and a worse tear is made. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins, otherwise the wine will burst the skins, and the wine is lost, and so are the skins. But one puts new wine into fresh wineskins. Okay, so um, really interested to see what your thoughts are on this. Um, Kath says, I've never understood this about the wineskins. I think the idea is um, that um, as wine matures, the skin kind of matures with it. I think that's right. Um, so, and it becomes kind of, presumably kind of old and leathery and tighter. Um, so you want um, something that's more fresh and elastic to cope with the wine and then it kind of matures with it, I think, I think is the general idea. Um, Zena says, uh, old ways don't fit with the new way of Jesus. I mean, of course, that is the one of the things that that um, this is, you know, it's one of the reasons I chose Psalm 98, uh, sing to the Lord a new song, that there is something um, there is something new um, in the way people perceive Jesus behaving and Jesus's disciples behaving. Um, and it's interesting, I think that um, I think that, you know, he says they cannot fast, that almost I remember uh, someone telling me once when I was um, at, at some point in Lent in the past few years um, when uh, I'd given up, I don't know, something pathetic for Lent, like Jaffa cakes or something. I was just hard for me to give up, to be fair, but um, something like that. And um, and uh, and I was asked, oh, were you breaking your fast on a Sunday? And I think at that point I said, well, no, you know, I want to go hardcore right the way through. And, you know, they were like, well, it's more than 40 days and 40 nights. Then it's like, well, fair enough. And then someone else said, actually, you're mandated to feast on a Sunday. You should break your fast on a Sunday um, and celebrate. And it always makes me think of that, actually, like there's a there's a compulsion, um, like Jesus's disciples don't have any choice. You have to celebrate. You have to feast. Um, and there's something kind of joyful, though, in that as well. And Sue um, picks up on that in Psalm 98, that, you know, that there is something um there's something joyful and something of creation in celebrating, eating, drinking and enjoyment and being. And, um, you know, there's um, St. Paul um, in one of his epistles, of course, talks about being careful of people who are kind of ostentatiously um, kind of abuse themselves for an apparent holiness and spirituality. Um, and I think there's something about, yeah, I think there's something about the enjoyment of creation. And as Sue says, there's something about that psalm that's so joyful. And actually, picking up on what Zena and, and, and uh, Sue have both said, um, there's something new about Jesus, but there's something old as well. Um, that Jesus is, is, you know, the beginning and the end. Um, Jesus is the word of creation. So there's something fundamentally old as well as it's paradoxical as well as radically new. Um, and that's something, another reason I chose Psalm 98, because there's something about the whole of creation singing with joy in the presence of God, the creator. And this is like the disciples are singing with joy. All their bodies are eating and drinking and they're resonating with the joy of creation being in the presence of, of God, of Jesus. Um, Janet 
points out um yeah a collection of sayings rather than a discussion um i i i think you're right i think the way that the gospels are compiled is you know it's oral tradition that is later rendered as written tradition and um i think there's often a a, a logic to why things are put together but i agree with you i think that it's not necessarily a verbatim transcription of of a conversation um um oh, rosalind yeah interesting point um the the way that the the jewish sects that are being talked about the pharisees and and john's disciples um i think that i think that notice that jesus doesn't um jesus isn't described as as condemning them for fasting um it's just saying that you know there's a reason that that you know my friends are are not um team parish of saint luke in the city liverpool which could be a couple of people um uh mentions that the old is still valued and i think that's a really important thing i totally agree a really important thing about this reading jesus doesn't make a value judgment here that old wine is better than new or new wine better than old he's just talking about um he's talking about difference but he's not extolling one over the other. And I, I think it's interesting that, um, I think it's interesting that, you know, there are movements in the church, the, the kind of new wine movement, and then the kind of counteracting old wine movement. And, and it's, it's quite a sadness that I think that sometimes these passages like this are used as, as sticks to beat each other with, or for Christians to beat each other with. Um, you know, to beat people who are seen as traditional as being old wine and um, to, uh, you know, and to equally be snobbish about people who are seen as, as new wine. And I don't think I don't think it is a value judgment and I don't think it, it, it's I don't think it's necessarily useful to understand it as a value judgment. Um, um, Rosalind says comparing Jesus to the bridegroom. Yes, of course, we have that in the book of Revelation um yes janet confirming the uh thing about the wine skins um ah okay team parish of st luke in the city of laura today i think um interesting as well though people are talking about fasting here um and uh, fast is a bit later justification for having a Friday fast. I think, I think that, that fasting is of course something that Jesus himself does in, in all of the gospel accounts, I think. Um, fasting and prayer, fasting and prayer often go together. And I, you know, I'm sure we've all experienced that there is something about, um, denial of food and drink that puts you in a slightly different space I think and that can be useful for prayer um, and it can be useful for a reflection um, but it's again there's uh, what something that's struck me about this passage I never really thought about but it's, it's grown and grown is there's no value judgment made by Jesus here about old and new fasting and not fasting there are no value judgments here um, there's just a dwelling in difference and i think that there's something beautiful about this dwelling in difference in this passage um and of course he says look there will be the time when my disciples will fast um the fasting there's a time for fasting and a time for feasting and it really resonates with ecclesiastes as well for me this and that wisdom literature that everything has its time um there is a time for fasting and a time for feasting, a time for the new and a time for the old. Um, one is not better than the other or have their place. Um, OK. Um, ah, Miranda is also Team Paris of St. Luke in the City, of course, appropriately. Um, thank you so much for your comments. I'm going to have to um, draw a reflection to a temporary pause because our our reflection is of course actually ongoing especially as we're we're discussing the same gospel account every day at morning prayer 
Um, so, um, we will gather our thoughts together in prayer and intercession. Uh, please continue to use um, the comments box for further thoughts, further responses to the scripture. Any other, any other thoughts or anything else you want to share? Um, and please also use the box for any intercessions, um, things, people, situations um, that you would um, like to pray for. And we will hold all those things together as our gathered community in prayer. So let us pray. God of the church, we pray for your church in the world. We pray for the Diocese of Liverpool, for our bishops, Paul and Beverly, and we pray for all church communities um, in our city region of all denominations. Our region is, um, is in a time of difficulty. Um, with the pandemic and church communities are being affected as much as all other communities. Um, we pray for wisdom and discernment for all those communities to do what is right um, for them as worshipping communities and for the wider communities they serve. Um, there is no right way uh, to do this. Um, there are many right ways that church communities um, can respond to this moment. So we pray for your wisdom and guidance in, um, in all that they do. And we pray for their thriving. We pray for our national church community as well. And we pray for all those survivors of abuse. Um, we pray for their ongoing thriving and growth and that they may feel that some measure of justice will be done. We pray for all those in the recent uh, involved in the recent report on abuse in the Church of England. Uh, we pray for all those in authority in the church now charged with responding, um, responding to that report. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the world, we pray for governments around the world, um, all those in positions of authority who are now charged with discerning um, responses to, um, well, a pandemic that simply hasn't gone away and that is now... Um, growing in places where it had receded. Uh, we pray for um, true wisdom in the discernment of the best measures to take and we pray that those measures are effective in helping to reduce the rate of infection uh, wherever they are introduced. We pray for all those um, in positions of authority who are charged with implementing those restrictions and we pray for all those who will be experiencing those restrictions. Um, we pray Lord that we all may respond positively and um, with open eyes and hearts and minds to all in our communities. We pray for a spirit of compassion God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all people, we pray for we pray for communities who who are trying to continue um, school communities, university communities, um, places of work that are still open. We pray for all of those communities who are trying to continue in a way that's best for everyone in those communities at the moment as things are becoming more and more difficult. Um, we pray for protection on all those 
who are studying in our educational institutions uh, around the city region. And we pray for your protection and comfort for all those who work in those institutions as teachers, as support workers, as cleaners, maintenance people, administrators, um, at all levels in those institutions. Um, this is an uncertain and anxious time for everyone. And we pray that those who are studying can get the best experience out of those places at the same time as uh, remaining safe. Um, we thank you that you are with each and every one of those people, Lord. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of those who suffer. We pray for all those who are suffering uh, with the unci uncertainty and anxiety of this moment we're now in. We pray for um, people around the country um, who may work in regions which have different um, levels of restrictions uh, being introduced. Um, we pray for regions um, who are coming to terms with what their new tier ranking means for them. Um, we pray for those who have family members in different parts of the country who um, are suffering different levels of infection rates. Um, we pray that your spirit of calm and peace is with them in their anxiety. Um, we pray for all those who are travelling around the country at this time. Um, we pray for all those who are once again feeling isolated and shut in and are suffering with their mental health. We pray for your healing and upholding and strengthening. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of life, we pray for all those who have died recently, for those increasing number of COVID deaths in our hospitals. Um, we pray for all hospital and care home and caring staff who are now having to bear so much of the burden of the increasing mortality rate and the increasing sickness rate. We pray for all those um, in funeral ministry um, around the diocese and uh, indeed around the whole country, all funeral directors, all those involved in funerals who are having to help comfort families in their grief at the moment in a time when this is becoming again more difficult. We pray particularly today for Florence Doyle whose funeral will be held at St Dunstan's this afternoon. Um, we pray for Christina, Elaine, Gary and Jane, Florence's children, um, and for all Florence's family, friends and loved ones, um, all those who will be involved in that funeral. We thank you that you are with them all and that you are present in their grief and that you will show them your hope of eternal life, the eternal life that is your love. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Amen. And so we gather our prayers together in the words that Jesus taught us. And please use any version of the Lord's Prayer you enjoy using um, in any language. I, I will use a more traditional version this morning. So we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so we join in our closing responses. At the turn of the year and the turn of the leaf, we look back at those things that have flourished for a season but are now falling to the ground. 
for all that has been peace. At the turn of the year and the turn of the leaf, we rejoice in nature's bounty and abundance, even as we are aware of waste, inequality and injustice. For all that is wisdom. At the turn of the year and the turn of the leaf, we draw closer together for warmth and company as we look back or as we look ahead to a season of cold and dormancy. For all that will be strength and the blessing of God, the womb of creation, the word of life and the wind of change be with us and rest upon our homes now and always. Amen. In the circle of God's love we are one. The circle is never broken. In the light of God's welcome we are one. The light never goes out. Let children teach us the wisdom of play. Let neighbours teach us the gentleness of care. May the circle surround us when we are apart. May the light draw us together again. Amen. Well, thank you all so much for um, joining us in prayer today. Um, it's a real pleasure and privilege, as it always is, to share this time with you. Um, Laura will be leading morning prayer and continuing our series um, on Mark's Gospel tomorrow. Um, Taste of God will be at 12.15 today on Zoom. Um, you can email the Taste of God address. Um, which you can find on the uh, one of the St. Luke in the City websites. Um, if you would like the Zoom link for that, it will be a different Zoom link than usual today. Um, so, uh, yes, please um, do. In fact, I think it's the, the link we use for, for coffee, for morning coffee after Sunday worship. So if you would like to join Taste of God um, at 12.15 today, please do that. Um, and um, otherwise, I'm looking forward to joining you again for um, morning prayer this week. Um, have a fantastic day, a great day. Uh, stay safe, um, whatever you're doing today and wherever you are. God bless and see you soon. Bye.